Okay, now on to our final PowerPoint presentation. I'm talking about extrophy of the bladder. That is where there is abnormal development of the bladder wall and it ends up where the pubic symphysis causes the bladder and urethra and your urethral or ureteral orifices to be exposed. So sometimes you will see this um, occur with an epispadius and then the urine will drain directly onto the infant's skin. <clears throat> so what we want to do is cover that area with moist, sterile, non-adherent pads until that surgical closure can be completed. Um, ambiguous genitalia is the inability to determine the sex of the newborn, so they have prominent female as well as male organs. Sometimes um, they need to do ultrasound to look at what internal organs there are. Um, when you're thinking about risk factors, um, there's a, definitely a defective sex hormone synthesis in male infants and then placental transfer of masculizing agents to female fetuses. So really what we're going to do in these instances is, is offer support, education, be patient advocates, support the parents. Um, we're going to need to th um, instruct them on chromosomal studies before sex assignment can occur and then lots of counseling as the family goes through um, making decisions and then care of the infant. Um, PKU is an amino acid disorder and it is due to a lack of enzyme called phenylalanine dehydrogenase. It causes an elevation in PKU that results in central nervous system damage. So when we talk about PKU, they do a newborn screen on all infants. It is done prior to discharge and the diagnosis is made um, off of that uh, test. Um, if they come back and the PKU is positive, then what they're going to do is uh, put that newborn on a special diet that is um, a low protein and then a formula for free phenylalanine so that it doesn't um, continue to elevate those levels of PKU. Lastly, congenital hypothyroidism, obviously hypothyroid meaning low, um, low level of thyroid hormones. And this again is, is done through that PKU screening that is done prior to infants being discharged from the hospital. Um, if you have a preterm or a term infant that is sick in this initial time period, um, they may need to have that test repeated. Um, obviously, treatment of hypothyroidism then is going to be the use of a synthetic uh, thyroid drug such as Synthroid or Levothyroxine. And if it's not treated, then um, they'll end up having some type of mental defect. Um, thinking about stress and how these families are going to cope with having children that have congenital anomalies. There's different reasons for stressors listed out up here and um, the long-term needs as far as anticipatory guidance, getting them involved with support groups, um, rehabilitation services so that, the, that this newborn and, and child can develop to their fullest potential is, is the way we'd like to go. Um, but we do like to help with their stress. Um, nursing interventions for the newborn with um, necrotizing enterocolitis. We have discussed this earlier, so I'm not going to spend um, a great deal of time talking about it. I would uh, just suggest that you read through this slide um, as far as um, the enterocolitis goes uh, with medical diagnosis and, and treatment once it is confirmed. Comparing surgical emergencies of the newborn, um, their presenting signs and symptoms and nursing interventions, you know, just read back through your book and um, we've kind of discussed most of them as we have gone along. So if you have additional questions, please bring them to class and we will talk about that. When we're talking about narcotic withdrawal, so these are going to be for our moms that are using narcotics prior to delivery, have some type of sub substance abuse. Um, we Oftentimes, obviously, it's going to affect the fetus. And when they are going through withdrawal, that's going to be when they are um, become real agitated. Oftentimes, we see them having a shrill or incessant cry. They have hyperactivity, so it's common to see them being very jittery. 
very little sleep, lots of wake cycles. Uh, with the GI, they don't feed well because they continue to vomit. Um, and so really when we're caring for these newborns, we want to keep them in a calm environment, swaddling, holding, um, really just lots of TLC. We are not going to use Narcan if these infants are born to a narcotic addict because that will cause just um, uh, a hurried and very um, abrupt withdrawal. As far as fetal alcohol syndrome, um, we see growth restriction prenatally and postnatally. We do see some um, mid-facial dysphoric features. There's typically central nervous system involvement. So what you want to do is diagnose that mom who continues to consume alcohol during pregnancy, get her um, some, into some counseling if she is readily available for that. Um, and do lots of education as far as diagnosing and referral so that we can kind of have some anticipatory guidance for her. We have already talked about um, the gestational age assessment. So when you're looking at these, um, as far as reviewing gestational ages, small for gestation, average and large, premature and postmature term, those are all terms that we you have had time and time again. Um, there's really no specific objective for this content, um, but you do need to understand that Caring for the babies born of a mother of gestational diabetes is an important aspect of, ex of the exam and um, you, we have already had it um, when we were talking about complications uh, during the prenatal period. So we will move on and continue talking briefly about SGA, LGA, and AGA. So with small for gestational age, it's just that. Uh, the baby is lower than the 10th percentile of weight. Um, things you want to look at, um, we'd like to see at least symmetrical growth. Um, asymmetric growth could mean um, that the brain growth has slowed. Um, physical findings, the baby just in generally is real tiny. There's not a lot of sub-Q fat stores. And um, so those are things that we will be looking for. This lists out the common problems. Average for gestation age, that's where we'd like to see these babies in between the 10th and 90th percentile. So actually gives you a very wide range. Um, look at your clinical paperwork and we did view the CD-ROM about gestational age. So that information you will be responsible for. And large for gestational age is then greater than that 40th percentile and you could say that greater than 4,000 grams is going to give them a diagnosis of LGA. Very common with infants that are born for to diabetic mothers. We really just watch these babies for birth trauma and hypoglycemia. Prematurity is a term that you learned in the very beginning so I would be cognizant of what preterm or prematurity means some of the signs and symptoms and complications that are associated with it. <clears throat> Talks about the physiologic functions of prematurity so we can rest assured that we will probably have some type of respiratory, cardiovascular, and then thermal regulation issues with these babies. This shows a couple of pictures of very premature babies. Um, we want to reduce central nervous system um, stimuli. We want to keep them in quiet environments. Um, we do like kangaroo care, so keeping the baby on mom's chest. With these babies, we are going to be responsible for adequate nutrition as well as um, watching their intake and output. And with physiologic functions, um, prematurity, they have a decreased capability of resisting infections and we like to keep them stable as far as growth and development. So if you, as in seen in this picture, there's a set of twins. So, you know, the, the kangaroo care or on mom's chest or on dad's chest, that skin to skin and encouraging them to bond with these new babies. Post-maturity then, post-dates, we've talked about this early in, in women's health as well. So that's going to be anything after 42 weeks gestation. We see that um, this baby has dry cracked skin. They have very long extended fingernails. Um, they kind of have the old person appearance. So um, 
be aware that they oftentimes are at risk for meconium stained skin and oftentimes they are at a higher risk for intrauterine hypoxia just due to uh, the placenta dying in those um, post-date instances. We talked about miscarriages and stillbirths being uh, before 20 weeks for the miscarriage and then after 20 weeks for the stillbirth. So I would reflect back to that information as well. Fetal demise is going to be diagnosed when there is an absence of fetal heart rate confirmed by ultrasound. So it has to be confirmed by an ultrasound. It can't just be done with a TOCO. Um, med management then is going to be induced labor. So it could be that we have to use Cytotec, Cervidil, Pitocin, Maybe it's just rupturing the bag of waters um, or a cesarean section if it is a stillbirth and mom is a repeat section, something like that. So really, when you're thinking about fetal demise, it's all about what can I do for you? How can I help you as the parent? What can I do to try to make this better for you or tolerant for you? I would say give them time, but be very close. I would find out what their wishes are uh, once the uh, baby is born, if they want to hold it and bond with it and those such things. And then this final slide has a few YouTube videos that you can watch at your um, as your time allows. Please bring any questions, comments, cares, or concerns back to class, and we will address those as well as other issues in the classroom. I thank you very much for your time and patience. I know this was a very long unit. It's the final unit, um, so continue to study and work hard till the end of the semester. Thank you so much.